I'm Mike Tolliver for ICOC Hot News. In November of 2010, fighting broke out in the Ivory Coast after two presidential candidates both claimed victory in the election. Civil war broke out, and eventually Alassane Ouattara was able to form his government, but not without terrible hardship on the Ivorian people and our church in Abidjan. 500 disciples are now refugees. Over 100 of these fled to the church building where they rode out the fighting. Hundreds of others escaped to stay with brothers and sisters in safer neighborhoods, often fleeing with only a few bags of possessions. Everyone lived for weeks with bombs, artillery, looters, and gunfire all around them. Fifteen-year-olds with AK-47s still roam the streets. The disciples have been devastated. Francis Dassé, lead evangelist in Abidjan, fills us in. Okay. J'ai vu le mot guerre dans la Bible. J'ai vu le mot guerre dans, dans les livres d'histoire. Mais cette fois-ci, j'ai vu la guerre de mes yeux. 80% de l'église a perdu son boulot. Aujourd'hui, 100, 100 frères et leurs familles sont hébergés à, dans, le, dans le building de, de, de l'église à Angers parce qu'ils n'ont plus un endroit où aller. La ville d'Abidjan est remplie de cadavres. La plupart des supermarchés ont été volés, violentés, brûlés. Et dans l'autre, une de nos régions à, à Yopougon, à l'ouest d'Abidjan, de, de, où nous avons plus de 300 disciples, les combats sont réguliers. Même hier, le dirigeant a dû quitter la maison pour aller à la réunion du staff. Et avant de rentrer, il a dû attendre parce qu'il y avait des combats. Aujourd'hui, dans l'église, il y a des gens qui ont faim, il y a des gens qui n'ont plus d'habits, il y a des gens qui n'ont plus d'argent, des gens qui n'ont plus de, 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 de logement. Mais je voudrais saisir l'opportunité pour dire merci à tous les frères et sœurs qui ont prié pour nous. La guerre, moi j'ai toujours pensé que c'était sur un autre terrain, mais nous avons connu cette guerre derrière nos maisons. J'ai deux bébés et c'était toujours debout comme on devait marcher pour éviter même de prendre une balle par la fenêtre au niveau du couloir. Ok, quand les soldats sont arrivés, ils ont insisté et je suis allé ouvrir la porte. Au moins une dizaine de soldats en armes et je leur ai demandé qu'est-ce qui se passe. Et donc nous avons besoin d'une certaine somme d'argent et si nous n'avons pas cette somme, nous allons tuer tout le monde. Il y a une vingtaine de personnes, 10, 10 enfants et 10 adultes. Tout le monde a été regroupé au salon et les militaires sont rentrés partout dans la maison. Mon petit frère qui recherchait était caché et ils ont fouillé toutes les chambres sauf la chambre où il était. Et ça je pense que ce jour-là c'est Dieu même qui a avait... Mark Ottenweller of Hope Worldwide recently returned from Abidjan. He was shocked at the conditions there. This is Mark Ottenweller. I'm the Global AIDS Coordinator of Hope Worldwide, and I went to Abidjan last week. There was destruction all over the city. There were burned out buildings, burned out uh, stores and houses. Uh, there was fighting on the streets everywhere. You heard gunfire in the, in the, in the evening, pap, 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 AK-47 gunfire. You could hear bombs going off. You wake up in the morning to boom, 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 boom. It's uh, terrifying, really. When I was there, uh, there were disciples that uh, had been traumatized by all the shooting on the streets. They had bullet holes in their apartments. They had missiles or explosives fall in their yard. Many had put up metal. Uh, sheets to prevent stray bullets from going through the windows of their houses. A lot of the disciples saw bodies on the street. People take the bodies, put them in a pile and burn the bodies with, uh, with tires. And uh, they were all traumatized by both the, the uh, smell of the bodies, the uh, sight of the bodies on the streets. As you walk down the street, there's a 15, 20 year old adolescent with an AK-47. You don't know whether he's a guard or a gang member or just a looter. They can shoot you. There's no security, no safety at all of any kind. Everyone's going to need counseling. Everybody I talked to was traumatized. The region leaders would cry and tell me about all the things they'd saw and heard, describe the bodies and the positions of those bodies on the streets. Uh, you could just see the, the trauma uh, in their eyes and hear it in their voices. I met some incredible people while I was there in Abidjan. One of the brothers, Isaac, was caught in a firefight between two armed groups. He was wounded with shrapnel from a, a rocket propelled grenade. He was laying on the street bleeding. Uh, he was able to, they were able to get him to the doctor after several hours laying on the street. He's uh, limping around now, but he was at church. It was super inspiring to see his courage and determination. Uh, I met a little baby, actually, an engrae called Dieu Donne, which means given by God. Uh, several weeks old, abandoned during the Civil War, left in a building, and some disciples found the baby and now taken the baby in. 
credible to the disciples that work in the clinic. Uh, they're there, they haven't been paid since January. They're there taking care of the patients, helping people. It is so encouraging to see the brothers and sisters responding with such incredible faith and courage. Hervé is a young man who actually jumped over walls and dodged bullets to be baptized into Christ. Still, huge challenges lie ahead. Literally hundreds have lost everything. Thank God about $80,000 has been given so far to Hope Worldwide, helping the disciples with food, water, and medicine. But Hope estimates they need another $300,000 in order to help these disciples restart their lives. Mark Ottenweller explains. What we really need now in, in Abidjan is your prayers. We have to raise about four or five hundred thousand dollars. We've got to raise more money. Seventy percent of the disciples before the Civil War made less than a hundred dollars a month. Now we're going to have to rebuild uh, their lives, uh, provide small business opportunities, income generation, vocational training, food, water, medical care, and shelter for hundreds of disciples just pulling out of a civil war to help them get on their feet. Please continue praying for the disciples. We need to raise more money for them. We need to send teams to encourage them. There are 1,800 disciples in, uh, in the Ivory Coast and they're gonna need a lot of help. Brothers and sisters, a cry for help has gone out from Abidjan. Hope Worldwide is there and is coordinating the efforts. You can go to the Hope Worldwide website and contribute directly. This is a pivotal moment in the lives of these disciples. We'll be keeping you posted at ICOC Hot News and Disciples Today. God bless.